Magicals and welcome back to another video. Today I want to share my October wrap up video with you. So it has been a really successful reading month for me. I think I read about four books and I read um, half of two books. So technically I read five books so I'm super happy with that. I were highly motivated in October to read which is something that hasn't happened to me in a very long time. So I'm extremely grateful for that. And um, yeah, I am really excited to share my October wrap up with you. What I also wanted to mention is that I finally started to write in my reading journal or to like create a reading journal. And I took a lot of inspiration from TikTok and um, Pinterest I think this is such a great idea because this way I can keep track of all the books I read and also keep track of the thoughts um, I had and like um, the ratings I gave. So this is really good, not only for booktube and booktop, but also for myself because a lot of the times I have the feeling after reading a lot of books that I do not really remember them. And this way I can keep track of all my thoughts on the books I read. If you're interested in an in-depth um, overview of my reading journal, definitely let me know and I will do a separate video for that and show you how I organize my reading journal. Let's start with the books I read in October. What's really nice is that now I can have a look at my uh, reading tracker. And in October, I read four books, of which two are physical copies, one audiobook and one ebook. And I read 1624 pages in total. And I really like to keep track of that. Um, I also did it for September. I started this reading journal in September and also um, started to write my tracker down for November. So the first book I read in October is the first book of the Throne of Glass series and I highly enjoyed this one. I'm a huge Sarah J Maas fan, I really like her writing style. Um, I adored the A Court of Thrones and Roses series and all of you guys highly recommended the Throne of Glass series. So I finally dived into this one and I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars and I would highly recommend everybody to pick this up. Well, I heard that the first Throne of Glass book is not as good as the following books in the series, so I'm really excited to pick up the next book in the series. For all of you who don't know, Throne of Glass is about the female protagonist, um, Selena, who is an assassin, and she is kept um, in this prism where she is forced to work in underground mines, I believe. And it's a prison that is built for only the most criminal and cruel. One day, the Crown Prince Dorian arrives and offers Serena a possibility to escape the prison and to regain her freedom. He says she needs to take part in a competition against other criminal competitors. And if she wins, she needs to be the assassin of the king for four years. And after that, she regains her freedom. So of course, Selena takes this opportunity and travels together with the Crown Prince Dorian and the leader of the royal guard, Kel, to the capital, where she then takes part in the competition. When she arrives at the castle and the competition begins, a lot of the competitors are killed off week by week and Selena is trying to find out who committed a crime and she's trying to find the murderer and also trying to keep herself safe. While she is searching for the murderer, she also discovers that there are a lot of mysteries happening inside the castle. So there is definitely a lot of plot in this book, which I really liked. I had not one second where I got bored. Um, it's just really, really interesting and there is a lot of tension. I also really like the love triangle between Prince Dorian, Selena and the leader of the White Guard, Cal. I actually expected to fall for like the evil crown prince, but in this case he actually did not convince me. I felt like his character were a bit boring to me and I don't know, I just did not have the feelings um, for him. Um, what is really unusual for me. I definitely like the leader of the regard, Cal, way more and I really did enjoy the relationship which we're building between Selena and Cal. So this is a really great book full of amazing storytelling, 
great world building, amazing characters and also a bit of a romance. Um, so this is basically everything you can ask for. I highly recommend this to everybody who has not picked it up yet. The only thing that I could criticize about this book and why I gave it only four out of five stars is that I were expecting a huge cliffhanger at the end. Usually if you like write a series, you want to end it with a great cliffhanger so that the reader wants to pick up the next book in the series. But for this particular book, I did not have this feeling. I don't know why, but I expected like um, more of a mystery or like many open questions at the ending of the first book and um, there weren't in my opinion. So that's the only thing that I would maybe criticize about the book but other than that I highly enjoyed this read. And the next book I read in October is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart which is like a book talk favorite. I grabbed it up because a lot of you guys on book talk and bookstagram recommended it and it appeared a lot of the times on my for you page so I thought why not give this a try because it's also out of my comfort zone of reading. I wanted to try out a new genre and actually it has not been the right book for me and I do not get the hype. Maybe I'm the only one but I were a bit disappointed by this book because I had like so high expectations because of all the good reviews and the hype. So I gave this book one out of five stars which I think I have never given a book and I honestly need to say this has been my least favorite book I read this year. To summarize the plot without spoiling is really difficult. Um, if you have a look at the back of the book, it only says a few lines and it says if only one asks you how it ends just like We are Sinclairs. We live at least in the summertime on a private island on the coast of Massachusetts. Perhaps that is all you need to know, except that some of us are liars. So this is a really limited description of what is going on in this book and that's actually something that got me hooked on the book because there were so little giving away before diving into this. So I thought there might be a lot of secrets and mysteries happening inside the book but for me personally it has not met my expectations. So to put it in my words this book is basically about um, a group of privileged teenagers who each summer are going on vacation on their family inherited private island and one year an accident is happening and um, a lot of mysteries are rising from this accident and um, honestly I cannot say more without spoiling for any of you who want to read this book even if I personally would not recommend it because I felt like even though this has been a really fast paced book I felt like not a lot of things were happening inside the book. A lot of the times I felt like I'm driven off and um, a lot of the times I felt like the writing style and the plot were boring. I was just waiting for this huge plot twist to happening and like a justification for all the, in my opinion, boring build up that were uh, written in this book. And yeah, there were no huge plot twists. Of course there was one, but it was not the plot twist I was expecting. Also, there were like um, a lot of characters introduced in this book for the short amount of pages that were in the book. And a lot of the times I felt confused because the characters were only like shortly introduced. And in my opinion, there were just too many characters for too little time to really go into the detail about each character. The next book I read, I do not have a physical copy of that one because I listened to the audiobook, but the book is It Ends With Us by Colleen Haver. And let me tell you, this book totally broke me and I actually only heard good things about this book on Book Talk and they definitely exceeded my expectations. It was such an emotional book that dealt with such dark and important topics in my opinion um, but if you want to read this book definitely go and check the trigger warnings because it deals with a lot of dark topics. I gave this book five out of five stars and it honestly has been one of my favorite reads this year. It Ends With Us is about the female protagonist whose name is Lily and she lives in Boston and in one of the first scenes she meets this super sexy and charismatic character named Ryle who is a doctor also living in Boston and when they meet you instantly know there is a spark between the two and there is 
definitely a lot of spice happening between the two. On the other end, you also have like this um, backsplash into the childhood of Lily and you learn that her father abused the mother and also abused her. So she definitely has a traumatic childhood and like the only person who gave her strength and hope in her childhood had been Atlas, who is a boy from her high school. And Atlas has also been her first real love. But after her father finds out that they're in a relationship or that I think he catches them when they make out, he totally freaks out. And after that, Atlas vanishes and she never sees him again until one day she bumps into him in a restaurant but at this time she already like starts a relationship with Wyle and she learns that Wyle has also a more darker and mysterious side to him so um she's starting to fear him so that is definitely extremely intense their relationship is extremely intense and it's just a highly emotional book. When I um, started reading, I expected this book to be like a normal romance novel, but it is just so much more than a romance novel. And if you are searching for a book that will emotionally drain and break you, then this is the book you should read. The next book I read is an ebook, and I was super happy to finally pick up my e-reader again. And I truly found out why I love reading on an ebook. It's just so practical because you can take it everywhere. It's super light. You have um, light wherever you are. It's perfect if you want to read at night. And I highly recommend everybody to get an e-reader. It honestly is worth the money. So the last full book I read is Dark Notes by Pam Godwin, which is a young adult romance novel. And I was explicitly searching for a novel with a student-teacher relationship because I was interested in reading that. And I was also hoping for a new spicy book. So I looked up on Booktube some recommendations and a lot of good things were said about Dark Notes, so I picked it up. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. So I would say it's a fairly good read, but in my opinion, there were a lot of things which were problematic in this book. Of course, not like the student-teacher um, relationship as such, because that was the thing I was asking for, or was searching for in this book. But in my opinion, there were a lot of things going on in this book. But first, let me like summarize the plot for you so you know what it's about. So um, it's about, this book is about Ivory, who is an extremely poor teenager living in an extremely poor community. And she's living together with her mother, who is a drug and alcohol addicted, and her brother, who is like abusing her. And basically her whole life turned upside down and went downhill after her father died when she was 13. And from this day on, she was the one responsible for the family. Ivory is going to this super elite music school and she is hoping to go to one of the most prestigious universities that there is in America if you want to become a great musician. In her school, a new teacher is hired and the first thing that happens when she enters the class of this new teacher, whose name is Emmerich, is that he instantly falls in love with her. What I found problematic about their relationship is that Emmerich really wants to try to help Ivory, but he is, in my opinion, is totally doing it wrong because she has a background of abuse and rape and she's really traumatized and she has a really twisted view on relationship, on love and on sex. And the way he then starts a romantic relationship with her and having sex with her is totally wrong because this way he's like twisting her false views on these topics even more because he is like her teacher and she is a student. In my opinion, this is not the right way to help her. I mean, how will he help her by fucking her? I I don't get it. So I, I'm not a fan of this um, book. I really enjoyed the spy scenes, but I have to say, like after half the book was over, I was just um, not up for another spy scene because I was feeling like this book lacked a bit of plot and there were just too many spy scenes in it. So that's something I would also criticize about the book. I think I would be more interested in reading a student-teacher relationship if it's 
based on um, two healthy persons and two persons who are not traumatized because I felt like there were like too many topics mixed in this book. These have been the four books that that I fully read and but I also read two books but only half of the books which is firstly The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones and on the other hand Rolling Hills and the Lost Key of Pichu Palace by Michael Horan. And what I can say about these books so far is that I really enjoy both of them even though they are total opposites because this one is I would say more of a spooky and darker themed book full of zombies and magic and in this book we also have magic but it's definitely more of a cozy and cute atmospheric book. I will give you the full wherever you want I finish the books in my November wrap up. So these are all the books I read in October. I really, really hope you enjoyed this little wrap up video. Definitely let me know what have been your favorite reads in October and write them down in the comment below. And I wish you a magical day wherever you are and see you next time. Bye. Thank you.